75-75, and then they beat Malone. As the Panthers get the opening tip. Fighting Scots in a 2-3. Wouldn't surprise me to see the Panthers shoot them out of the 2-3. Yeah, that's... As the kick out 4-3, no good. Offensive rebound. Nolot missed the three. Offensive rebound and putback was good by Clifford. Shot no good from the Fighting Scots. Panthers look to push. Pump fake by Lamb. Jumper, no good. Offensive or the rebound was fought for on the ground and pulled in. I think that's going to be one thing Panthers are going to have to really uh, take advantage of is on a missed shot, getting it down quick so they really don't have time to set up into the zone. But, I mean, really, we're a three-point shooting team, so we'll see how it goes. Though. Esposito shoots the three, and she's going to pick up the foul on the other side as the Scots have a one-point lead here with 8.40 to go. Panthers are trying to get it into the that high post area to Lamb. Maybe go a little high-low with Clifford as they get it to Clifford. Ball was... Off the foot, it looked like out of bounds going to stay with the Panthers. 11 to shoot. Looked like it may have been a kick ball that wasn't called. As they get nice to no lot, no lot. Had the, swat, the shot swatted away. Can't even talk. <laughs> As the three was good by Kaylee Clifford. Get paid to talk and can't and can't right now. Hey, it's tough. I mean, <laughs> New Year. I mean, it's been a while since I've done this. Maybe, maybe we can get it going here as, hey, as the game know, gets going. It's just like anything else. Takes yeah. a little, you know, takes a little time knocking the rust off. Good help side defense from Keely Lamb forces the walk by Rachel Brown. Duncan for three, good. Yeah, I don't see uh, Scott staying. Yeah, I don't see him staying in that 2-3 zone. And some tells me they can't go man with it. No, I don't know what they're going to do. I would say 1-3-1, <laughs> one, one, maybe a little 1-2-2. Two, two. Another good help side. Defensive play from Lamb. She drives all the way down as she kicks it to Nolot. Nolot shoots the three. Good. As the Panthers jump out to 11-3 lead with 7.02 to go. First timeout, and we're going to take a media timeout. We'll be back right after this.
Welcome back to the Owensboro Sports Center. As the Flying Scots are going to bring the ball up against the man-to-man -man press that the Panthers put on. As they get a trap in the corner. They are they're able to get it out, try to get it down low. They do. Ball swatted out of bounds. Going to stay with the Fighting Scots. Good scramble and recovery by the Panthers defense. Keeley dropped down real quick. Everybody's kind of scrambling. Nobody got a wide open shot. As Key Lamb knocks it away to Callie Nowat. Lily Grimes oh, yeah. wow. layup good. Looked like a wide receiver running down the, down the sideline. Perfect lead pass from Callie Nowat to Lily Grimes for the easy lay-in. The drive from Ortiz, no good. Lily Grimes gets it. Tried to kick it out. I think had the ball knocked away. As Imani Ward and Kyron Backland check in for OVU. No subs yet for the Panthers. They kick it out to Duncan. Back up to Lily Grimes up top. Back to Duncan. Left corner. Good. Automatic. I'm sure I'm going to jinx it as soon as I say it, but we haven't missed three yet. So next trip down, we're going to miss a three, and it's going to be all over. But Clifford steals the pass, gets it to Grimes as she gets fouled. Foul is going to be on number five, Stephanie Kirk. As Leah Richardson, Jordan Bargy, and Talia Walton check in for Kentucky Wesleyan. Not really a difference there. No. <laughs> we just kind of reload. That's the, that's the one thing about this Panther team is I think we could start. We have a start. The normal, if the normal starters didn't want to start, as Leah Richardson pulls the three, nails it. If the first five that come off the bench started for us, I don't think there'd be any change. Wow. Gemma Bennett checked in. As she's a sophomore from Brisbane, Australia. A lot of culture on that's, Ohio, I was Ohio gonna Valley. say the same thing. As the shot by Backland kind of hit the back of the yeah. rim and just fell right in. Yeah. As the Scots have made their second bucket. Lamb skip pass to Duncan into Talia Walton. Walton over to Lamb in the corner. Three. Doesn't hit anything. <laughs> As Jordan Bargy got the offensive rebound. Can you just call that a pass? Yeah. Okay. Walton gets it again. Skips it. Richardson three. Left wing. Good. Great ball movement. Good one more pass from Keeley to Leah. A three on the way from Bennett is good. Bennett and Backlund said, hey, nobody else gonna nobody play. Nobody else so. gonna do it, we'll do it for you. As Bargy's layup hit basically the top of the backboard <laughs> and goes in. They always tell you to use the square, not, <laughs> not the top of the backboard square. As they get it inside to Ward, who gets the easy lay in. Nice entry pass from, I believe it was backward maybe. Ward, the leading scorer, I believe, for this. Yeah, averaging uh, almost 19 points a game. Doesn't start. Off the bench averaging 19 a game. Almost kind of like our Talia Walton for their team. 
I'd say Talia has a slide up her hand, though. As Tia Shelton checks in for Ohio Valley from Gainesville, Florida. Not only do they have a, a international team, they also have some uh, all, over the, all over the United States. Walton's three, no good. National brand. Yeah, I mean, they got Washington, Florida, Indiana. Bargy hits the two. Which you would expect West Virginia, Ohio. But it, yeah, that uh, kind of throwing me off there. <laughs> Maybe it's close. I, I don't it, know. It's not close to Ohio River, is it? I don't think so. Richardson takes it all the way up, has his shot blocked. Nice charge. And it, Yep, and they are going to call a charge on Ward. Emma Johnson going to check in the game for the first time tonight. Checking in for Kentucky Wesley, number two, Emma. Number 20 going to come back in for Ohio Valley, Jordan Fox. Emma Johnson from right here in Owensboro, Kentucky. Davis County alum. You think Jay Billis would have liked that charge, or you yes. think he would have had something to say about nope, it? Nope, that's a charge <laughs> all day. Bargy gets it inside. I believe she shuffled her feet yep. a little bit on that second little – she, she pounded her dribble once, stopped, a little shuffle, layup. Going to get called just about every time. I believe she might have been surprised at how <laughs> wide open yeah. she was. 26 to 10 with 150 to go here in the first quarter. As Shelton steps on the line, going the other way. What is this, Scott? Like a Viking? Is that? Um, I think it's like a um, Irish or a Scottish, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, something. I don't know. I think it's just a fighting Scotsman. Yeah, uh, maybe. Maybe that's why they have international players. Yeah. Maybe. Good ball movement yes. from the Panthers. Richardson's corner three, good. Corner pocket for Leah Richardson. Great movement from Bargy to Johnson. I think everybody touched the ball at least once that possession, and it ended with a wide open three for Leah Richardson. As they try to get into Ward, Ward goes up and gets it. She missed the shot, offensive rebound, 10 seconds to shoot. Oh, yep. Coach Miller wasn't a fan of that one. Nope. <laughs> As Kelly Nolot had it left corner, Johnson, little eight foot jumper, too strong. Amazing how wide open the middle of the paint was. It yeah, they have uh, they have not come out of that 2-3 <laughs> zone. I think they've gone a little bit more of a matchup where it's kind of a hybrid between a man and yeah. a zone. So that, that middle area is wide open. Really just kind of playing a, a spot on the floor. Uh, you, you'd think one of the emphasis would be keep it out of the paint. Yeah. Johnson pulls the three off the front of the rim. Offensive rebound. Johnson tried to get it to Bargy, no good. Three seconds, half court oh, wow. shot. Oh. oh. Goes in and out. Clutch. Yeah. Wow. As the half court shot was no good. Panthers lead 29 10 at the end of the first quarter. We'll be back right after this.
Welcome back to the Owensboro Sports Center. As we come out of the end of the first quarter, the Great Midwest Athletic Conference has implemented a new point system for conference play as the Scots take a three, no good. As ball go to Wesley. The point system is based on whether you win at home, whether you win on the road, lose at home, lose on the road, um, and depending on the record of the team depends on how many points you get. As the three by Duncan in the left corner is good. So, for example, in this game, if the Panthers win at home, obviously, they, against the record of the Scots here in this one, they would win three points for their for this win if they were playing a team that had a 700 or 750 record and we were playing on the road, we'd get seven. It would be seven points. So you can find all that information on the Great Midwest Athletic Conference um, website as it is new. So now what is it, do wins, I mean is that the first thing they look at or they look at how many points you have to, de to determine? I think that the seeding for the conference will be based on good look from Clifford to Walton for the easy lay-in. I believe the, from what I understood, I think the rankings, how the seeding of the tournament will go is based on your how many points you have. So as of today, Walsh is leading the conference with 4.7. They are 5 and 0. Oh. Kentucky Wesleyan is at 4 and a half at 5 and 1. So right now, the point system goes just about hand in hand with your record. The only difference Clifford's left corner 3 too strong offensive rebound. Grimes drives in, no good. Brown stood the ground. The the only difference that I see is like when you when you work your way down. Ohio Dominican is two and four in the conference. They have a two point three point two five and are in sixth. Who is, they have a better point rating than Lake Erie, who is at three and three. So. Even if your your record could be worse, but your points could be more based on who you've played, where you've won, or where you've lost. So, interesting. It it is. It's going to be a whole lot to keep up with. I'm glad that I'm not in charge. <laughs> as Lamb's three is no good. Almost kind of reminds me of the new like it was at Ken Palm or like. Yeah, power index. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of the same, and they your wins could fluctuate. Like if we if Wesleyan was to win against a seven a seven fifty winning per percentage team, and that team happens to lose every game the rest of the year, they would get they would only get points. Say they dropped to a a five hundred, they dro that team dropped to five hundred. We would only get five points. So it's not of the point when you win, it's at the end of the year. So gotcha. that your points are going to fluctuate from what I understand. I could be wrong. Three by number 20, Jordan Fox. That will get her into the scoring column. That was a pretty pure shot there. Came off and let her fly. Lily Grimes pulls the three, good. As the one of the last games before the break here at home, Lily Grimes had not made a three. And then I think she went off for two or three in a row and finally found double dribble. Found the stroke a little bit from behind the three point line. Once you find it, it's not really something you can lose. 
Once you have that confidence, you're just going to start letting them fly. Yeah, before the game, she came in three of 19 for the season, and I think all three of those probably came in the in that one game, as I believe it was against Harris Stowe right before Christmas. As Clifford had no lot wide open yeah. on in the right on the right wing, tried to get it down low and oh. didn't. As the Scots throw it away, <laughs> as there was no defense down there, trying to get to a guard, just threw it out of bounds. I didn't really understand the pass there. Right? I, think, I, she, I think she could have brought it up by herself, no problem. Yeah. It's a good skip pass from Keeley. Richardson, back to no lot, down to Walton. Walton throws a missile in there to Kaylee Clifford. Fouls on Kirk. Kirk. Bargey and Johnson check back in. Bargey, little jumper off the glass, good. Nice kiss off the glass. And that's a tough angle to get one yeah. to go off the glass. Really, I mean, more straight on like that, you're kind of just hoping that, you know, you got the nice little touch. And, and obviously she does. Yeah. Long three. three. Quick. Yeah. Quick release there from Esposito. Kickball. Ball kicked. As kind of got bailed out there, did Lamb, and she was basically driving out of control on the baseline with nowhere to go. As the ball may have been kicked again, not called. Fast break for Backland. Gets the two to go as the Scots trying to find a little life here midway through the second quarter. Johnson couldn't control it. Euro step nice is from good from Backlund. That's a nice move. Rachel Ri or Leah, Leah. Rich <laughs> Leah Richardson. I was talking with her about that <laughs> in class. Uh, I, get, that's, I'll, I have a problem with especially sisters that look exactly the same. No lot goes down. Three from Leah Richardson was no good. Check it in for the fighting. As we're going to go to a media timeout, Panthers lead 41 to 20. Thank you for listening to Panther. Welcome back to the Owensboro Sports Center. As pull-up jumper, no good. Um, may have gotten away with a foul there. As Before we went to break, uh, he got confused on Rachel and Leah. Yeah. Leah in uh, class, we had to come up with a unique fact about us. It could be fact or fiction. And uh, she said that she had a twin sister that wasn't her twin sister. They look just alike though. And the uh, 
I, I work at Breckenridge County High School, and we have two two girls on the basketball team that are twins that also have a, another sister. That and I was like, I'm looking at the poster that hangs up outside the gym. I'm like, that is not either one of them. Who is that? <laughs> Turns out it was their third sister that I didn't know was their sister. And I get the I get the two twins mixed up all the time. The only the only way I know the difference, <laughs> one has a little bit has a mole under her eye. Uh, so that's a, that's the only reason I can tell them apart. One's right handed, one's left handed, but when on they're the not when like they're that. not playing a sport, you don't know. Yeah. Lamb pulls the elbow three. She knocks down her first three of the game. I believe she's leading all scorers, isn't she? With eleven. I don't know. Let me let me let me try to find the stats here. The uh, stat thing looks different <laughs> in the new year. <laughs> got to scroll way down here. She's got five. Oh wow! Duncan and Richardson both have nine. Where was I with? Huh. Hey, I was just trying to boost her stats. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she wouldn't. Uh, she yeah. wouldn't mind that. As we're just going to have a 30-second timeout. We'll just keep it here. Going back to the, the point system. Walsh leads the women's point system with 4.7. As looks kind of like it's going to be a two-team race yeah. early on. Um, Malone, Cedarville... Finley, all are four and one in the conference. Malone and Cedarville are tied at 3.8 points. Both of those teams only loss in conference play coming at the hands of Kentucky Wesleyan. Wesleyan's only GMAC loss comes to the hands of Walsh. I didn't get to watch the Walsh game, but from just asking around, it seems like Walsh was just kind of hitting everything that they were putting up. And it seemed like they kind of hit us in the mouth and it kind of took us a little bit to, to kind of get back in it. Jumper was no good from, I believe it was Akaya Brown. Kelly Nowat shoots the three, good. Panthers coming out hot here from behind the three point line. I can tell a difference in her shot compared to, because there's a little bit there for a while. Callie wasn't really hitting, it was short. Now she's really using her legs and staying in it. Brown. Brown gets the lay in to go. Good little high-low action from the Fighting Scots. 47-22 with 1.50 to go. Bargy gets the lay in. Off the assist from Callie Nowak. Yeah, I was trying to find the stats from that Walsh Walsh game. Let's see if I can find it here. I remember somebody. So I forget what is either sixty something percent that they shot, but it was just a unearthly just. I mean, even on my best day in the gym, I don't think I could. <laughs> I couldn't shoot that <laughs> by myself in the gym. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this this uh, our, the Panthers team shoots just about 50% uh, from the field. As Lily Grimes steals it away, left-hand layup, good. Lily Sky Grimes, as I will never, ever get that right this season. <laughs> Wall shot. In the first half, they shot 50%, 75% from behind the three-point line. That's not bad. So, taking advantage of that early. <laughs> three, no good. Good block out from Bargy. Get a little two-for-one action here. What do you say? I I'd agree with you, but normally I'm wrong when I say when I say that. 
Walton step through. Wow. It's the lay-in right at the front of the rim as we will not have a two-for-one. Ball bounced a lot out of bounds. Uh, we're going to have one one last possession, I would think. Panther fans can put that one on me if they need somebody. I'll wear that one. Good help from Talia. Hey, here we we got it. I mean, you you were right. <laughs> As Walton goes up, gets fouled with 3.1 seconds to go. As it's going to be a first free throws by either team. It's good officiating crew. Good play. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, there's been several chances for the Fighting Scots. They've driven in hard, and the Wesleyan defender just straight up and down. Walton's free throw, no good. I think I found what what the problem was for the Panthers. They got out rebounded. The rebounding margin was 14, 44 to 30, in favor of the Walsh Cavaliers. That doesn't happen to no. us very often. Well, I think that Walsh had a little bit of a size advantage as a three from Clifford. Good at the buzzer. <laughs> oh wow. Stole the inbound <laughs> pass, J jacked up the three to take a 56 20, excuse me, 57 22 lead into the locker room at halftime. As we'll be back in 15 minutes or so with a recap of the first half and the start of the second half. Thank you for listening to Panther Basketball on the Great Midwest Digital Network. Both with nine points. Panther shot 64%, excuse me, 68% in the first half, holding the Fighting Scots to 39%. 68% will win you a few ball games. Yep. Spe pass, especially right? when you when you make 12 nice threes, cut. good cut. Maybe a, there's a foul maybe, but it didn't get called, but there's a foul right there. Keely Land just did some kind of back roll. Yeah, I, she does that all the time, and I have no clue how she does it. I don't think I can move like mm -mm. that. Right. Well, that's like the, uh, have you seen the new thing where you lay on your back and you have to get up without being on your side? Or flipping all the way over. I you have to like, <laughs> you have to like take your legs and like, s basically come all the way around to stand up. It's wild. <coughs> right, so we've we've got a stoppage. I believe Chauncey Greer is contact maybe, yeah. or is she bleeding? Maybe I, I don't know. Be a contact because. I guess they're thinking Chauncey may have swept it up with the, or wiped it up with a towel. Oh, I think oh, she got it. Yep, She's got it. it. <laughs> As we are going to get a sub in for. Ortiz, Bennett. I believe Coach Miller was like, she cannot see <laughs> right now, so she's got to come out of the game. As I'm sure their trainers are going to hook them up with some contact solution, get her right back in oh, there. Yeah. Simple fix. <clears throat> it's a whole lot easier than uh, losing the contact. Yeah. Especially if you don't bring any extras as a three, just too short for Esposito. Pulled down by Keely Lamb. Lamb trying to go coast to coast. No lot for three. Too strong. Good effort by Kaylee Duncan. Clifford to Lamb. Back out to Lamb. She'll set it up. Ohio Valley still in the 2-3. They're going to stick with it. Kirk with the rebound. Esposito will walk it up.
Nobody getting anything to go here so far. Lam or, yeah, Lamb almost had it into Clifford. I believe that one should have been more of a little, little lob instead, instead of, a, of a one bullet of the missiles. <laughs> they like throwing the little missile pass in yeah. there. Lamb, corner three, good. Three point basket for number 14, Keely Lamb. As the Panthers had 12 threes in the first half. They are well on their way Returning to breaking the starts, school Smith. record for threes in a game as it came in 2018 at the beginning of the year with 19 against Ohio Christian. Esposito may have gone away with a walk under, down there under the basket. Well, she really established herself either. No. Being She's <laughs> basically just shuffling her yeah. way to get the open. That's all right. Yeah. As she gets it inside to Brown, who gets the lay in to go. Tough lay in over the defender. Strong move. Grimes drives. Gets it out. And now over to Duncan on the left side. Duncan drives. Kicks it out to no lot. Does not shoot it. Gets it to Lamb, who loses out of bounds. No lot's got to be ready to pull that one. Sixty to twenty-four lead for the Panthers. Long three is good by Jordan Fox. It's a great name, Jordan Fox. That was almost NBA range. Yeah. They get it in to Lamb. Lamb to Duncan. Duncan's three off the right side of the rim. Duncan's first missed three of the game. I don't know what I did to my computer, but now we can see both both people's scores there. There you go. Don't know what I did. Well, he did something good. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Leah Walton and Bargy will head to the scorer's table to check back in. Ohio Valley working it around the perimeter. Stolen by Duncan. Grimes pulls it back out. Get great pass nice. to Clifford for the easy lay in. That's a whole lot easier. Absolutely. I don't know what happened, what I did, but, but now we can see both teams instead of just staring at one the <laughs> entire time. As both teams are basically changing the lineups as Maddie Boyle is going to go in for the first time tonight. Nolot steals it away, couldn't get the handle on it. As they got a... Ta take a deep three, and Keely Lamb picks up a horrible foul. As there was one second on the shot clock, they were heaving up a three, and Keely Lamb fouled Jordan Fox, who's going to shoot three free throws. Max Debris is livid <laughs> right now. Checking in for the Panthers, number five, Richard. Wherever Max is. I don't even know if he's listening to this. Max, if you're listening, shoot me a text. I'd say it's one of those. I, I think I think he just felt it. It's kind of like when a dad knows a He's probably stack. like, I'm turning this on. <laughs> yeah. It just it, He probably twitched a little bit. Just <sighs> Like if he's taking a nap, he woke up. Like it was a nightmare and he had to wake up. Although, if I was asleep right now, I wouldn't be getting up till tomorrow morning. <laughs> Jordan Fox hit all three. Walton gives it to Boyle. Boyle pulls the three straight away. No good. Good rebound by Talia. Back out to Boyle. 
Johnson with a little free throw line jumper is good. If I was in with Johnson, I would not take any shot other than that free throw line jumper or a wide open three. She can step because, into a three now. Yes, she? because she makes probably 85% of those free throw line jumpers. So we're going to get a foul on Stephanie Kirk. It's her third. As we're going to go to a media timeout here with 4.51 to go. Panthers lead by 34. We'll be back right after this. Panthers had the ball out of bounds. Richardson looked to get to Bargy Walton. Ooh, tried to find somebody, and I don't know I think who. She's but. trying to find Lee in the corner. <laughs> Good drive. Yeah. Nice move by Backlund. Backlund's back well. had a couple good moves. Yep. I don't know girl. if I don't know if that one even hit the hit the backboard. As I believe that was on Kirk, who will pick up her fourth foul. With 4.17 to go here in the third quarter. Bargy at the free throw line. Bargy with two shots. Gonna knock it down. I'll get her in double figures. Uh, she's the, yep. She's the second Panther in double figures. Kaylee Clifford also with ten. I you know, I don't think we talked enough about how the half ended. No. I, I, <laughs> I don't first off I think it caught everybody by surprise. Yeah. <laughs> well from our from our informant down at the at the stats area. There's a foul on Matty Boyle. Our, uh, our sideline reporter, Franzen, down there, said that Clifford was like, I want to be on the ball. I'm going to get it, and I'm going to shoot it. Well, she did exactly that. <laughs> and then not only did she do that, she made it. I mean, drained it. I mean, wasn't even, like, Kind think, of, it was almost like a floater that she shot. I think she caught it. Didn't even take a drink. No, just she, just she turned, turned and like floated it in there and didn't even hit the rim. I mean, I. And our boy, Joe Burke. Yeah. Didn't even get it on replay. Hard to find good help. Yeah. We're gonna have a foul good on job. Emma Johnson. <laughs> Emma Johnson. There's been more fouls already in this quarter than there was in the entire first half. Two shots for Nia or Tory Ortiz. If we had the budget, we'd get friends and a microphone. We'd down, you know, go down live. Get, get him on the walkie-talkie <laughs> and just put it up to the put it up to the mic. We need. That's what we need. We need to have another camera <laughs> yep. where we can interview the coach. 
<laughs> at, during it during timeouts. Or you think we just put a mic on them like ESPN does and have a mic'd up session? Maybe. You think? You I don't know if we can. Do, I don't know if we have that capability or not. <laughs> but have a have a player mic up. <laughs> Talk to them yeah. like they do in the All Star game. Emma Johnson steps into the three as Walton gets the rebound up off the glass. Good. Leah Walton played volleyball there with herself a little bit. Of tip, grab, up. Walton was six. No good. And I'm pretty sure it hit the bottom yeah. of the back, bottom of the whatever that's called, <laughs> the, the goal. I mean, let's hit the bottom of the, the backboard. That's a little different. I don't even know what those are. What Stanchion, is that what they call those? The, uh, the Well, any of it. I don't know. I've heard that term thrown around. I don't really know what it means, but I've heard it before. Ball was kicked. Do we have the capability of seeing where the Panthers stand defensively as far as points allowed? I believe in so. The country? Let me shot clock violation. Let me let me let me look. Because I believe they're giving up maybe just like 59.3 points a game if I if I remember correctly. Well, you're going to take over the play by play. All right. Boyle's going to walk it up to Walton. Over to Richardson. Richardson will pull it. No good. Tip. Johnson comes down with the rebound. I believe we'll have a foul, maybe. Tempers flared a little bit there. Foul will be on Walton. That's her first team foul. Lamb, check back in for Returning Walton. for the Panthers, number 14, Keely Lamb. Five on the court for the Panthers goes Boyle, Richardson, Lamb, Johnson, and Bargy. Ohio Valley University in the bonus. For Ohio Valley, it'll be Backland, Brown, Shelton. Two shots for Amani Ward. Ward and Ortiz. First free throw is good from Ward. Ward, leading scorer for the Fighting Scots. That last foul is on Tia Shelton, freshman from Gainesville, Florida. Kentucky Wesleyan's 26th in opponent field goal percentage, which is pretty good. That's not bad. Let's see what else I can find. Maddie. Boyle will pull it. He'll stay here with the Panthers. <clears throat> Two sixteen left here in period three. Bargy off the glass. She likes that little little bank shot from about the block. That's her shot. Kentucky Wesleyan's fourteenth in the country in opponent point per game at fifty three point two. Wow. It's real. I mean, it, it's really impressive given the kind of pace of play that we play at offensively. That. They still give that much effort on the defense. Boyle, lay it in. That'll get her on the scoring column. Freshman from Milledgeville, Kentucky. Kentucky Wesleyan is second in the country in scoring margin at 29.3. That's only .2 from being number one behind a region team, Grand Valley State. Good move from 
from Shelton just off a little bit. That's a nice, uh, nice in between there. Matty Boyle just split, just went right through the top two wings and a little dish off to Bargy. Boyle. Coming in, her, make herself earning, known. Yep, earning herself a little bit more uh, playing time. Good kick out for the three by Backlund. Kentucky Wesleyan is 10th in the country in scoring offense at 82 and a half a game. Glenville State, which I have no clue where that is, <laughs> average 106.4 points a game. Wow. <laughs> Who do you think they're playing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel Richardson gets in. Bargy misses the jumper. They're in the Mountain East Conference. Are they from West Virginia? I'm not sure. Grimes tried to chase it down. Walton Clifford will check in for Bargy and Johnson. Returning for Kentucky West number 21, Julia Walton. Keely Lamb thought she was getting subbed in for it. Walton had to scream at her to stay on the floor. Back on drives, throws it up off the side of the board. Great defense. And at the end of the third quarter is Panthers 74, Fighting Scots 41. We'll be back after this message. Welcome back to the Owensboro Sports Center where you have the Fighting Scots and the Kentucky Wesleyan Panthers. Panthers lead 74-41. I'm blown away by that, by, by that number. Great move and what, by the, Backland. During the break, we what we looked up there, they scored over 120 points five times. Five times. They've scored 149 145 and 137 in a game. Walton couldn't get it to go. They must have just done Dude, in, I don't in, know. in grade school where you do like you're practicing your offense and it's five on zero. It. Yeah. It, it. And like they had oh my. Oh my Jordan, long three. Jordan Fox was shooting that from downtown Viana, West Virginia. Uh, uh, ooh, Clifford for three. Yeah. Good. Three. Clifford step in and say, hey, this is I'm, how you do yeah, it. This is how we're going to do this. Walsh, who is in the GMAC, fourth in the country in offense, 86 points a game. As well as Drury, who is in our Walton the Lamb. Region. Lamb lays it in. Drury, Fair State, Grand Valley State, all in the top 16 in scoring offense. 
from the region. It's long three from Backlund, no good. Checking in for Ohio Valley University, number two. I won't ever get over that <laughs> number. I think you'd have to go back to maybe even men's or women's. Maybe Loyola Marymount back in the run and gun days. I mean, it, I don't know if they might even come close to that. 106. I, I mean, that, <laughs> that that has to be some kind of record if yeah, they can, if keep, they that can up. keep that up. That I want to have to keep my eye on that t on <laughs> that on their team. Set up some kind of Twitter notification. <laughs> yeah. When they get Glenville <laughs> State. <laughs> see when they get done. Just see yeah. what the score is. Just keep track of it. <laughs> Looking at the uh, steals, Wesleyan 11th in steals in the country. They doesn't, have doesn't surprise me at 171 all. 171 steals. Not even the Num slightest Number surprised. one team in the country, Alaska Anchorage. They have 211. Kentucky Wesleyan foul number 23, Clifford. You don't hear much out of Alaska. No, I actually know... The, my boss, the first year I interned in uh, Florida, was from Alaska. Okay. He uh, went to Winthrop to college. He said he drew three names out of the hat of a hat. Whoever made the NCAA tournament in basketball, he put all those 64 teams in a hat, pulled out three, and then chose from those three where he wanted to go to school. So wound up at <laughs> Winthrop. <laughs> Long fadeaway three, no good from Jordan Fox. I'd say he was a culture shock, though. Alaska to Florida. Yeah, <laughs> well. Sometimes it's dark in Alaska. Then you got Sunshine State. Yes. Rachel Richardson pulled the three, no good. Yeah, it's only dark half the year in Alaska. I mean, that'd still be weird, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, he One went. He in went. The he went from. Jumper no good from Ward. He went from Alaska to South Carolina to college and now to Florida where he works at the at Rollins College in Florida. Okay. The Tars. D pretty good D2 school in just about everything. Panthers lead 79-43. As the three, no good. Good box out by Rachel Richardson. A.J. Thomas walking the scores table. Surprised we haven't seen uh, DeCorey Puckett yet. Yeah, she has not checked in yet. Lily Grimes pulls the three off the side of the rim. No good. Richardson saved it back in play just to the wrong team. Jordan Fox, long three. No good. I think Fox is just pulling it every time she gets it now. <laughs> you know, I mean, Grimes takes why not? It. Layup know. blocked by Imani Ward. Johnson also joins the crowd at the scorer's table. Have we played a defense this year that hasn't been man-to-man? -man? Um, no. I mean, I not that I've seen. I, I mean, I, I really don't know why I we don't wouldn't. Know, I don't. As Clifford pulls the three, no good. I like, we're so effective. Yeah, and I don't. And they don't get tired. Yeah. That's the thing. That some of, like granted, they don't play. None of them play the whole forty minutes because we have probably the deepest bench in D two women's basketball. They don't get tired. So they're able to do that, which is incredible. As we're going to have Kentucky our first Wesleyan media timeout, our last media timeout, with 4.41 to go. Panthers lead 79-43. We're going to take a quick break and be right back after this.
Going back to the Owensboro Sports Center as we are underway with the going to be as we get a five second call. It'll be the last timeout before the end of the game unless one of the two teams calls a timeout. 79-43. Puck it over to Richardson. Puck it checks in the game. Just yeah. you ask, I you get... shall receive, Brady. Oh. Thomas gets two chances, wow. three chances. Look at that. There you go. She's just trying to get her rebound stats <laughs> up, too. I think she's trying to go for uh, at least a double-digit double. rebound game <laughs> yeah, right double, there in double, all one double. setting. Yep. Yeah. Good job, Rachel. Basket number 50, Rachel Brown. Brown able to get it up over the defender. You know, I watched Brown shoot free throws here. Or I forget what quarter, but it's – Unorthodox, but it goes in. It's all it, matters. Yeah. Thomas tried to get another layup to go, unable. Bennett reeled it in for the Fighting Scots. You know, it's interesting here. I was just going through uh, Ohio Valley's stats for the season. Both of their leading scores come off the bench. <laughs> you'd think you'd want to have them in the game. Uh, as much as you can. Yeah. Yeah. But, hey, they're not paying me to make that call. Uh, you're, so. That's why you're not the coach. Yeah. Nice move by Boyle. Basket number three, Matty Boyle. Boyle is uh, – that's her game. Drive, make a move, make somebody miss, layup. She will shoot it. She's not afraid to shoot it. But she's more of a, let me see if I can Euro step you and get to the rim. There's a lot of bright futures here, freshman wise. I mean, let's see. what We got what? One senior? One senior. Keely Lamb, only Good senior. Very, La very bright. Last year, same thing. Mm -hmm. One senior. No, maybe two. I don't know. Shayla Wright was I think maybe the only senior. We did lose a couple couple players off last year's team, but obviously 83 points later in this one, able to make up for it. Jenna Martin, who was, I believe, our leading scorer on last year's team. Saw she uh, recently committed to Bellarmine for next yes. year. Not a bad, not a bad little gig. No, not at all. Great move, great pass, excuse me, from Emma Johnson to A.J. Thomas. What's get her the, four points. What's the rule when you get the ball at the free throw line in the zone, shot, buddy, something, or kick out, or something like that? I, I forget. Shot, you're looking, for, you're looking for your shot, you're looking to dump it down to the post, and you're looking to kick it backside uh -huh. for a wide open three as – Emma Johnson did that to perfection as she looked for the shot, pump fake, good pass down low to A.J. Thomas. Leading scorer in this game is Jordan Bargy with 14. Emma Johnson free throw line jumper, no good. A.J. Thomas gets it again, throws it up, no good. Backlund leading the scoring for the Fighting Scots. As we're coming up on one minute to go. 85-48. Give him a minute. Made her first three of the game. Hasn't been able to connect since. Thomas pulls the three, no good. Is she taking all the shots for? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> DeCoria Puckett couldn't get it to go. Hey, AJ Thomas, she's getting I, in the stats. She's like, man, I want to get my name in there. 
I mean, it's what you gotta do when you yeah. get it. When they, uh, I'm sure the Neemans want to see what they have, yeah. like all the way down at the end of the bench. As there's several games where they get really good minutes. As the shot from Ortiz, no good. As that's gonna do it from the Owensboro Sports Center in this one, Panthers are gonna win 85-48 over the Fighting Scots of Ohio Valley. Ohio Valley's gonna move to two and eight overall, one and six in GMAC play. Panthers extend their, what seems like 29 games at this point, winning streak at home. I believe it's 26.